Let's go to the next question. What's the next one? Okay, so well, let's let's do the difference between therapy and coaching, and what are the limits of coaching? Because this is a really great segment into uh, where, and it's a very real question. You know, what is therapy? What is coaching? My first thought on it is that both fields are extremely valuable and useful, and it's helpful to know what what each one is designed for and to use it in that way, like gears in a car. You know, it's helpful to know what, you know, first gear is designed very differently from third or sixth gear, you know, and it's, it, it's, it matters. My sense on this is uh, therapy is designed from a coaching perspective. Therapy is useful when you as a coach are working with a client and you're bumping up against something that does it make sense or makes you feel uneasy or makes you think, okay, this is, I, I am out of my depth in this realm. Like, I, I don't, I think this is not, this is something that uh, is not, it, it's deeper than what's happening in the present. It's not looking forward, but it's trying to heal some past trauma or something that feels unresolved or there's, you know, there, there needs to be a, a deeper intervention um, around past. That is definitely the territory of therapy. And I've often worked with clients who are also working with a therapist. That is an incredibly powerful setup. And I would suggest that. So as a, from, from a coaching perspective, as a professional coach, if you feel like you're out of your depth, it's helpful to have a therapist who you partner with to ask questions and say, hey, this is what came up in the session. From one professional to another in confidentiality. Uh, you know, to have this written into client agreements is a, is a useful thing if you want to go that direction. Uh, I, that when I was practicing, I had a therapist I would talk with, and we would share clients back and forth if I thought, or I'd refer clients, you know, to her practice, she to mine. And uh, I, I recommend that. Yeah. And, and the other thing I would add to that, um, I too have clients that are in therapy and coaching with me, um, is to add to the design the alliance you know how do you see coaching being different to the therapy that you're having because we want to be mindful of the the feel because if somebody has been in therapy for a while they're used to a different kind of feel of a session and i know that that came up for me early on when i first started coaching people that were in therapy there was they were used to a different kind of feel so I really needed to design that alliance and talk to them about what a coaching session was going to look like and also how they wanted it to be different like what were the goals that would be different from therapy and coaching and what might be the ones that are aligned yeah and then on a deeper level of what what the difference is this is as i know that the difference is now it's not that therapy is monolithic or this is you know cognitive behavioral therapy like everything is you know that or everything is you know, health board certified ICF credential coaching, like, you know, all coaching is in this way, uh, that both fields, there is differences between the different types of therapy, different types of coaching. Okay. To generalize, however, uh, what, what a therapist is trained to do is to listen, recognize patterns, and then offer proven interventions. That's what, that's what the training's for. Coaches are trained to listen with curiosity and ask questions that empower the client to come up with the insights and the action steps. That's the fundamental difference between the two fields. Now, a therapist can definitely put on a coaching hat and be a coach for a period of time. That's 100% okay. A lot of therapists do that. And there is a recent movement in the the counseling and therapy world to have coaching classes and to say, Hey, this is how coaching operates. This is what coaching looks like. And so a lot of ther therapists will also, we've had th people who've been trained as therapists take our coaching course and have a coaching practice along with the therapy practice. Coaches going to therapy without being trained. Don't do it. It's not, it's not, that's the limit. That's the boundary. That's, that's not what coaching is. It's not about recognizing patterns and offering proven solutions. Uh, you can ask suggestions. You can you can say, hey, this is what I th this is what I've read to be best practices. These are the, these are the suggestions, but that's it. That's the stopping point. At that point, you go back to curiosity mode. You go back to empowerment mode, and 
you let you know your client or other professionals work more on a knowledge basis. Uh, that's how I see the the two fields. That's really helpful, John. And just a final bit on this: Can you help people that are listening help us to understand? Um, sometimes I get this question where coaches can be worried that the deeper exploration or questions around emotions or feelings mm -hmm. or something on the past comes up that that is actually therapy and not coaching. Right. Coaching can have a therapeutic element. The distinction I see is if the past and feeling, thinking, emoting around the past has a present tense meaning, has a present tense um, impact that your client can, can work with to craft some sort of future step forward, some future action step that feels like the client is empowered and you know, there, there's an empowerment basis to it, then yes, you're, you're still in coaching territory. And for me as a coach, I, I feel it as, you know, oh, we'll go in the past sometimes, we'll go into the emotion, but I don't need to know the details of the past. I don't need to know the, I, I'm not here to recognize the patterns or to say, oh, you know what, that is this thing. Like, you know, that's not, not. It's, I can create a space for you to process what you need to process, to bring it back to the present moment, to take a, an empowered action step into the future. That, so I, I'm holding space here. You know, and I think what would the difference, the difference point would be that where the, where the two diverge is a therapist will also hold space here. Like I'm holding space for you to process, we need to process the past. The difference is a coach will then go from that space towards present tense curiosity. Whereas a therapist is trained to say, ah, I'm seeing this pattern. It might be this, what about that? And they can suggest something and that that's the diverging, that, that's where the two paths diverge. So it's not in the processing of the past, it's what does the practitioner do with that next? That's the difference. Yeah, and that I just have to share, this reminds me of when John was coaching me once. So this was a very, it was a powerful question, but it was also something that I was being triggered from kind of past or past behaviors. And I remember this, John, I won't forget it because I've journaled on it many times, what healing still needs to take place? And it was, it brought me into the present. It wasn't about what might have been broken or, you know, all, all of those things that were coming up for me from the past, but it allowed me to release in that moment and also recognize myself as healed. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. It was a powerful moment and a powerful question. That's cool. I just saw an eagle fly by when you said that. And they're... <laughs> <laughs> they're not flying by every day not yet <laughs> it's not we live in a there's that eagle spot. i'm sure it flew past that time as well we that eagle shows up um it's, it's fun. It's fun. so did you want to cover the other question this Let's time do it. goes so fast doesn't it you know i, I get going and i i you know this is one of the reasons why i love teaching because you get to talk you can say whatever you want uh it's it's good i mean i feel like it's lovely to know I, I was born to do this work and to feel it, you know, to feel like, yes, this is what I love this stuff. I love reading about it. I love coaching. I love listening. I love curiosity. There's definitely an element of um, when I think, you know, you're, you're in the spot when you're in your coaching genius, when you're loving the exploration. There was once I was riding uh, with a buddy, uh, we're mountain biking and I was just I was, I was doing amazing. I mean, it was one of the best rides and wasn't even, it wasn't even that technical that, I mean, the trail was medium, uh, but I just, I mean, it just felt like every curve, I just was like leaning in and just felt the, it felt like I was as, as, you know, trite as it might be, there's like one with the bike and one with the dirt and everything. And uh, I, we finished, we got to the halfway point and uh, he comes, comes riding after. And he said, what happened? I said, yeah, I know, right? Uh, and, I, and I just felt like I just fell in love with the trail. I, I, I just, there's no, it just felt like 
it, it was like every little thing that you wouldn't normally have to do, like every non-necessary thing, but still to treat even the non-necessary things with love. Uh, that, that's, that's what was happening. And I feel like how this translates into a coaching session is, yes, as a coach, you're asking the question, like the thing, the thing that will move the session forward is a question. But when you fall in love with the challenge that your client is, you know, is experiencing in the sense of using it as a, a means to explore something deeper or to explore, you know, help the client see something that, you know, or gather an insight that's more valuable than solving that, that initial problem. Oh, there's something there. You know, there's something in that. And that, that for me was a huge turning point when I stopped trying to solve it, but instead try to explore it. That changed everything for me. You know, it opened up a whole new world of, of curiosity. And, and that's what I feel like a lot of coaches are, are yearning for. Um, I don't know how that plays on the difference between coaching and therapy. I feel like therapists will do the same thing in some ways. Um, but that, that comes up. So John, you're answering like you are allowing us to kind of think big and step into this inspiration space, like these limitless possibilities. Yeah. Do you think we can answer the next few minutes then? What would you say are the limits of coaching? It's when you feel like there's something, like if you keep on bumping up against something that is, it doesn't make sense. That feels like this just feels way too incongruent. I don't, I don't know what's happening here. That's what you, you, you call your you know, therapist um, colleague and ask, or you know, you might even talk to the client afterwards and say, hey, do I have permission to contact this therapist? I have a couple of questions. Um, that, that's the limit. <laughs> 